All right, let's get weird today, boys. We've got the Beretta PX4 Storm Compact Carry in 9mm. This gun came out in 2004, but miraculously, Beretta went back to 1987 to film a commercial for it. Beretta's PX4 Storm. 25 years of combat proven results have led to the Beretta PX4 Storm. Capacity, durability, accuracy. Whether you're defending your homeland or your home, you can rely on the Beretta PX4 Storm. Holy shit, is that turbo from American Gladiators? Oh my God, what a great video. Look at it, boys, soak it all in. Look at it. Found this video on YouTube, 16 minutes long. It's fantastic. Look, check it out. It features one of my personal heroes and gun fashion icon, Ken Hackathorne, with that sexy ass mustache he's got. Ken, I know you're watching. It's also got a visual reenactment of my first date with my wife. So I had never considered the PX4 Storm Compact as a carry gun. Again, you guys know I'm a Glock guy, Glock 19 guy. I'll carry the Smith & Wesson M&P series every now and then, but I, I really didn't see the point in getting involved with the PX4 Storm, and I didn't really much look into it. For that matter, every time I've handled one, what struck me about them is they feel kind of clunky. They're also not very Glocky, hammer-fired. So that's, of course, very un-Glock-like. They don't say made in Austria or Glock anywhere on them, so I ignored them for the longest time. But then one of my buddies, Bill, who used to work over at Narrow, reached out to me and said, hey, James, how would you like to review one of the Langdon Tactical, so the LTT PX4 Storms? I said, no, I don't want to. And he said, no, 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 trust me, you're going to like it. And he wasn't quite wrong. So today we're going to talk about the six reasons why I would consider carrying the Beretta PX4 Storm Compact Carry, and we're going to talk about a couple reasons why you might not want to. So before we get too wild in here, let's just talk about the basics. What is the Beretta PX4 Storm? Obviously, made by Beretta. It's polymer framed, and unlike most polymer frame handguns that are striker fired, this one, as I mentioned, is a double action, single action using a hammer. But it isn't just the double action, single action hammer fired mechanism that makes it different from other polymer frame handguns. This gun also uses a rotating barrel, the compact carry does. We're gonna talk about this feature a little bit more as we get into the video, but bear in mind that the PX4 only the compact and the full size have the rotating barrel. There's just not enough runway on the subcompact version of the PX4 to actually have a rotating mechanism. But this rotating barrel is the same system from the Beretta 8000, also known as the Beretta Cougar, and it's got the same trigger and safety mechanism as the Beretta 92. And even though this gun is kind of a hybrid of the Beretta 92 and the Beretta Cougar, it's really not much like either pistol in any other way. It comes in nine millimeter, 40 and 45. We're talking about the nine millimeter today. It of course comes with three 15 round magazines. So you've got 16 round capacity, 15 plus one. You have all the accoutrement that you expect from modern polymer handguns, including modular back straps. You've got a single slot Picatinny rail in the dust cover, adjustable sights, and the gun's pretty ambidextrous. You've got an interchangeable magazine release. It comes with an ambi safety or decocker. Some versions come with a fully ambi slide release. This version has the low profile or stealth slide lock. It's also got a host of other neat features like multiple size options for the magazine release, multiple size options for the slide release, as I just mentioned, a hammer unit that can be removed from the PX4 without the use of special tools as a single group, and even a hidden little lanyard loop in the grip. Isn't that cute? It's five inches tall with a 6.8 inch overall length and 1.42 inches wide. The compact carry comes in at 26.8 ounces on my scale, which is actually, I think, slightly lighter than what they represent it to be on Beretta's own website. While it's nowhere near as popular, of course, as the, say, SIG P320 or the Glock 17 or 19, it has been adopted by state, local, national authorities, not only in the United States, but in about a dozen other countries. Now that we're done talking about the PX4 generally, let's talk about the PX4 Compact Carry because this is 
Not a whole different animal, but it's been substantially modified and it'll run you almost double, but we'll get to that. The Compact Carry Series was developed by Ernie Langdon and Beretta in tandem to offer a higher tier PX4 factory option. It came out in 2017. The standard PX4 Compact Carry will come with Ameriglow Night Sights, Talon Grip Panels, Beretta Competition Trigger Group, and a low profile decocking safety lever. It'll also come with this very handsome Cerakoted slide, even if it is called <clears throat> Sniper Gray. The version I have is the next level up. It's got an insane trigger job, a custom trigger job by LTT that we're gonna talk about in just a moment. This one does not have the talon grip inserts as you can see here, but that's fine because I'm okay with the standard Beretta grips. I could see though why some people might think that the sides of the grips are maybe a little bit too slick. They only have a little bit of texturing while you've got more aggressive diamond texture in the front and back strap. So why would you carry a PX4 Storm over something else? Well, I'll give you the biggest reason why. Number one, durability. Durability. It turns out that this gun is insanely durable. In fact, Beretta claims that the PX4 Storm can get through 100,000 rounds without a parts breakage. That's a pretty bold claim to be making officially and in writing. However, Ernie Langdon has published videos and he swears up and down that he's got over 64,000 rounds through one copy of a Beretta CX4 Storm and he's never had a breakage. I'd like to believe that the main reasons why this gun is so durable is first of all, it is built a little bit like a big fat hog and we're going to talk about that. But also this extremely robust rotating barrel system has to have something to do with it. It uses two massive lugs, almost like a bolt action rifle, that serve to lock and unlock the barrel. This is unlike, say, a link design system in a 1911 or the standard browning, tilting barrel system that you see in like Glocks or SIGs. Instead, this gun's got two meaty locking lugs and rotating out of the way, they delay the blowback until chamber pressures drop to a safe level, cycle the action, and then they lock back into place. It also has a cold hammer forged barrel, which cold hammer forged barrels are typically used in high-end rifles and even combat rifles like AKs in order to maximize the barrel life. And it's somewhat unusual for a handgun to have that, but it would certainly make this design much more robust. It also uses a fully supported chamber. Number two, one of the most important aspects of a carry gun reliability. Again, Ernie Langdon says he has 64,000 rounds through his gun and he's only had 12 stoppages and no parts breakages. That's totally bonkers 5,800 mean rounds between stoppages. Again, assuming that's true and if I had to hypothesize, I would think that the rotating barrel also has something to do with that. This rotating barrel is just moving backwards and forwards. It's not tilting down or up. So you've got a little bit less lateral motion whenever the gun's cycling. And for that matter, the bullets don't have to travel as far. You have a very, very tiny feed ramp, almost not even noticeable on this gun because it doesn't need it. That's because when you load a magazine into the PX4 Storm, the bullets are basically facing into the chamber already, ready to pop in there as soon as the action cycles. Certainly, that has to help with feed reliability and with extraction. It's also got a fairly sizable external extractor you can see right here. The Beretta PX4 Storm. Number three, accuracy. I'm going to lump mechanical accuracy and recoil management kind of all into one thing because they're again related to this rotating barrel system. First of all, as to theoretical accuracy, I've heard it explained that if you have a gun that's not moving off axis, is that the right term, axis? You know, it's not tilting up and down, it's just moving forward and backwards and not as much, that it's going to be a naturally more accurate gun. Whether or not that's even true, I doubt it really makes a difference in terms of pistol shooting. Possibly related to that recoil mitigation. According, again, to theory, this rotating barrel with the rotating lugs 
that absorbs some of that recoiling energy. That is the act of unlocking the barrel whenever it's moving rearward. So we took the PX4 Storm over to see the boys at Gretna Gunworks right there across the river. Fantastic little range and gun shop. If you're in South Louisiana, make sure to stop by. And we all shot this thing very well. Put a few boxes through it, around 400, 500 rounds. I would say that this seemed to be a mild recoiling gun, and I will say I shot it extremely accurately. <laughs> Not shitty. We were punching out at like 25 feet, right? Like eight, nine yards. We were punching out clusters. I mean, all holes touching. I'm sure that that isn't due to like this theoretical mechanical accuracy that's out there. I think it might be a combination of many factors. I think the most likely culprit is the trigger. Turbo laying down some heat. Number four is the trigger. I never thought that I was going to say this about a double action, single action, hammer fired gun, but the trigger in this gun is freaking amazing. And you almost want to say worth the price of admission. In single action, while like with most hammer fired guns, you do have a little bit of take up as you can see there. Trigger pull weight is a mere three pounds on the dot. And that's fine because it's a double action, single action. So it isn't like you're carrying this thing, I certainly hope not, it isn't like you're carrying it cocked with a three pound trigger you're going to be carrying it with the hammer down and that means that your first trigger press you're going to be pretty damn sure because remember you're going to produce the gun you're going to pull the trigger for that first double action shot and then because the slide racks all of your subsequent shots are going to be single action so that first double action pull is going to be a lot heavier than three pounds i'll tell you that much all right nice and easy easy does it about seven pounds, 10 ounces to give it one more go. Oh my gosh, seven pounds, 10 ounces, like right on the dot. And I'd say that's respectable for a double action trigger pull. I mean, you've got a lot of double action guns out there where the first pull is 13 pounds. But to discuss this gun in the quantitative, like it, how many pounds of trigger pull it has versus the qualitative, and that is how good this trigger feels, is to do it a disservice because the trigger in double action and single action is amazing in the compact carry, at least the version that I got from LTT. And when I tell you what they did to get this trigger and how much it costs, you're going to be a little bit less surprised that I'm making that statement. Langdon Tactical actually goes through and polishes every interacting surface. They polished the trigger bar, the hammer, the sear, and the hammer strut. They replaced the sear spring and the hammer spring with chrome silicone springs, and they include the LTT optimized performance trigger bar, that's in quotes, which significantly reduces trigger reset to less than one tenth of an inch. It also has a 10 pound hammer spring instead of the stock 14 pound hammer spring. This isn't a huge con, but it still has kind of like a a plastic trigger. I, I don't know, should that bother me? I mean, of course, like I shoot Glocks and they've got plastic triggers, but when you pay the kind of money you pay for this and you've got like this really nice trigger, I mean, is an aluminum trigger too much to ask for? Number five, fantastic sights. These Ameriglow Hackathorn style sights are excellent. You've got a matte blacked out rear box sight. Like it makes a little a box, right? A geometric box in the back, unlike many Hackathorn style sites that you see that make like a U. These are geometric and they complement perfectly with the high visibility front sight that is also geometric. Instead of a dot, that front sight has an orange square that fits perfectly in the notch in the rear sight and it also has a tritium insert for nighttime use so it glows in the dark, right? Very well executed. This is similar to what I carry on a lot of my carry guns. And finally, before I stop Jay in this thing, oh, safety. That's something that both Beretta and Langdon Tactical kind of really hammer in their marketing materials. Speaking of hammer, oh my God, 
That was a fantastic unintentional pun. This thing's got a hammer. You've got that initial double action pull that's gonna be heavy, around eight pounds. That's going to kind of act as your safety. Now you can get it with a manual safety if you want, but most of us don't like manual safeties with our carry guns because that's one other thing that you have to do before you let a shot go. So you can get it like this one with the decocker only version and the low profile decocking lever. Also having the hammer there, I've heard a couple people say that what's nice is especially if you carry appendix, you can kind of keep as you're producing the gun, you can kind of keep your thumb on the hammer and that way you know you're not gonna accidentally fire this thing. I'm not sure if that's like a real thing or just something that I heard on the internet, but I just like to call it a index carry because you do it long enough, you're gonna have no PP. It's got an automatic firing pin block that raises up whenever you shoot it and then lowers back into place whenever you're not pulling the trigger. So this is a very safe gun for carry. If you're one of those people who gets super paranoid, understandably, about carrying a striker-fired gun, like say a Glock or a Smith & Wesson M&P, something that's got like a five to six pound striker-fired trigger, you're worried about giving yourself Glock leg, this might be a very attractive option for you. Now, as far as the negatives, the biggest negative for me is what I call the James Reeves high school girlfriend factor, and that is that this gun is big and fat. I'll say this, it looks and it feels bigger and heavier than it actually is, but when you compare it to, say, a Glock 19 that weighs just 23 ounces, you're looking at a gun that's about five ounces heavier, even though you've got the same capacity, and turns out, you even have a shorter barrel. So the barrel from the compact is only about three and a quarter inches, which is, look at this. Here's my Glock 43 barrel. They're almost, I mean, they're virtually identical in terms of size. So that means this thing's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the similarly sized Glock 19, although the gun has generally the same overall length and is about five ounces heavier. I wanted to just go off the specs that I saw on the internet and I saw on Beretta's site where they said that this gun was 1.4 inches thick. When you think about the Glock 19, you're talking about like 1.2 inches thick. And that two tenths of an inch, while it doesn't sound like much, is a lot when this thing is in your waistband. So of course I get my trusty caliper out. I take some measurements. I can't find a spot on this gun that is 1.4 inches thick. That must be like from the widest point to the widest point on the factory ambidextrous slide release or something like that to get that 1.4 inches because for the most part, this gun is around 1.2 inches. Almost every point that I measured of significance, you're looking at like 1.2 inches. Even though it feels fairly bulbous, um, it is, it's still, a, by numbers, it's still a relatively slim gun. So even though that was something that kind of turned me off initially, especially when I'm looking at the specs, and when you pick it up, it still does kind of feel, you're like, man, this is a chunky gun. Another negative, you can't use a silencer with this gun because of the rotating barrel, not to mention it rotates both ways. So it isn't like, you know, it's just rotating in one direction. It doesn't matter what silencer, if it's left hand, right hand twist, you put a suppressor on this thing, you it is gonna come untwisted actually fairly quickly. I'll put some B-roll here. I didn't ask permission, but I'm sure my buddy Mike Pappas had no problem letting me use this footage showing him, and I'll put a link to his video in the description, shooting a PX4 Storm with a suppressor, and you know, you just shoot it a few times, not even through a full mag, and it's already twisting itself off the gun. Finally, the big one, Gucci gun, Gucci prices, 875 bucks. Now that's not mind blowing, right? You have two types of people who just responded. You had people that said, oh, that seems pretty reasonable. It's got a fairly sophisticated trigger job. And if it's as good as you say, James, remember guys, Glock fanboy, so I'm not gonna mislead you on this point. That is, this is a fantastic trigger. So if the trigger is as good as you say, if it's as reliable as you say, if it's as durable as you say, you also get kind of the, the sniper gray coating. you get the upgraded levers, you get night sights, you get three magazines, yada, yada, yada. You get all this stuff. To me, for a gun that costs $475, $500 street price, 
$875 isn't asking too much. But then you get the other half. You guys that are out there, which I totally understand, by the way, I totally understand both sides of this argument, but half of you out there are saying, why the f am I going to pay that much money, $875, when I can just spend four or $500, get a Smith & Wesson M&P, get a Glock, drop an Apex trigger, and still have money left over to buy a case of ammo. I guess that is one way of looking at it. In conclusion, I was pleasantly surprised. If I wasn't wholly invested in another platform, if I wasn't a striker-fired polymer frame handgun guy already, this would actually be in the strong consideration for me as a concealed carry gun, especially if you're one of those people you're averse to carrying with a round in the chamber, if you're worried about too light of a trigger, but you don't necessarily want a safety and you don't want to carry cocked and locked like with a 1911, but you still want a good trigger and you want some bells and whistles like night sights, I guess this is your gun. You could also look at the standard model, but I would strongly encourage you to compare the standard model of the PX4 Storm, compare it against the compact carry from LTT, and determine if it's worth the upgrade. I'll save you the math and tell you that, in my opinion, I think it is. So that wraps it up for me today, gang. I wanna say thank you to you guys for watching. It really does mean a ton. You have no idea how much it means to me and the rest of the TFB TV team, just that you guys watch and just that you subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, please do. If you like this content, you're gonna get more of it if you subscribe. I wanna say thank you to our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters, those of you who fund us through Patreon and Subscribestar. Not only do you get rewards, but what you're doing is you're providing us a means to not have to accept checks from Beretta or LTT or Glock or whomever. I mean, of course, Glock, I'll show them for free. But we can give you purely independent reviews. We don't rely on pay for play like most of these bullshit YouTube gun channels out there. Everything we tell you is from right here, baby. And we couldn't do it without our sponsors, even though none of them give us a single dollar. We get our ammunition from Ventura Munitions. We get our belts that we give away to our subscribers from Blue Alpha Gear. And we get the guns that we give away to our Patreon subscribe star supporters every month who are automatically entered into a drawing. Those come from Top Gun Supply. So thank you as usual to our sponsors. But once more, thank you for watching guys. Take care.